Our next speaker is Stephanie Dick of the History of Science, who will speak to us about aftermath, following mathematics into the digital. Hi, thank you all so much for coming. I'm really excited to be here today. Throughout history, mathematical knowledge has been held up as an exemplary accomplishment of human reasoning and human intelligence. Central to that knowledge are proofs, demonstrations that certain mathematical statements are true. And for thousands of years, the work of producing those proofs has been a task belonging exclusively to human beings. But beginning in the 1950s, something new was introduced to the work of mathematics, the modern digital computer. Computers made possible new and exciting and powerful ways of proving theorems, but they also raised fundamental questions. Some computer proofs are too long for any person to actually read all the way through. Some make use of computational processes that are too complex for the human mind to easily apprehend and understand. Should these be considered proofs at all? Should we be convinced by them that something is true? What kind of knowledge is mathematical knowledge, and how is it transformed or unsettled or challenged by the introduction of computers as theorem provers? Questions like these have troubled mathematicians and philosophers since the inception of computer proof. And they are also of great interest to someone like me in the history of science, a discipline that seeks to understand how knowledge is made and made differently and made possible in different times and places. However, I contend that before we can appreciate these questions fully, we have to go back in time. We have to understand what was actually involved in getting computers to prove theorems in the first place. We need a history. And to that end, I am writing a dissertation that is a historical account of the digital automation of proof in the United States. And the question that motivates me at the bottom of my project is this. What happened to mathematics when it was translated into the digital media of modern computing? How did early programmers and computer scientists reimagine and reformulate mathematics in order to make computer proof possible. And I propose that this story is, in large part, a material story. Traditionally, mathematics is characterized as dealing with highly abstract and immaterial things. But throughout history, mathematicians have formulated and explored those abstractions by way of tangible, visible, written, tactile material tools. They make use of things like diagrams, written symbol systems, physical models. These are designed to make abstract things like integrals and sets and numbers and logical propositions accessible to human faculties. They make them explorable by way of visual and tactile practices. But the automation of proof required that mathematics be made accessible instead to computers and their constituent digital media. Programmers had to deal with problems and materials that were quite foreign to the human experience of mathematics. The processes by which proofs are constructed had to be translated into algorithmic, rule-bound, electronic, computational operations. And mathematical objects had to be reconfigured so that they could be input to a computer and stored and manipulated in its electromagnetic memory. And these digital materialities were very different from the human-oriented ones that preceded them. For example, in the 1950s, a new data structure called a linked list was developed to represent simple logical propositions to mainframe computers. Data structures are ways of organizing information in computer memory and a way of assigning meaning to the underlying bits. In a linked list, each element of a logical proposition is stored in a set of bits of computer memory. 
The elements don't need to be stored in the same physical place, however, because each one points to the address and memory of the next element. In this configuration, mathematical objects are physically distributed and intermingled with one another in the electromagnetic materials that constitute computer memory. Computers are amenable to this type of structure, but humans are not. Linked lists accommodate computers, not people. Today, computers are being used to help us make knowledge of all kinds, from mathematics to sociology. But we don't usually ask how they got there. We should. Transformations in disciplines were required in order to make collaboration with computers possible. And we think differently with computers. We reimagine the world through their limitations, their possibilities, and their material specificity, especially at the beginning. I study the history of automated theorem proving to understand transformations in knowledge and thinking that were made and made possible by computers. Thank you very much.